And uh, I don't know if anybody heard about the guy who hacked a, a United Airlines flight from Denver to New York City last April. So the guy is sitting in his seat, tapped into the CAT-6 uh, wiring system, and from there, from the flight entertainment system, was able to hack the engine control. And he gave thrust to the right engine, causing the plane to yaw and climb, and he tweeted, uh, it, a half oxygen on it. He was going to pull around and drop the oxygen mask down. And he also said stuff like, we can imagine shutting off the engine at 35,000 feet without having any of the alarms go off in the cockpit. So here's a guy sitting in the seat doing this. And um, he says he has hacked the ISF. He also wants to hack the Mars rover. The guy's name is Chris Roberts. And he has a software, uh, he's a security consultant out of Denver. And he says he can fix these things. And you know what, he can't. He's a really sharp guy, he can fix all the things. But that's not the real problem here. The real problem is with the computer architecture. 35 years of people playing cat and, get, cat and mouse games with hackers and developers and security consultants, no one has fixed the virus problem. Back in 1989, a guy by the name of Douglas McElroy, he's out of Bell Labs, wrote this great old five-page paper. And he says, although a, although a particular virus attack may be guarded against, no general defense within one domain of reference is possible. Viruses are a natural consequence of a stored program computation. 35 years, nobody solved the problem. And so I want to talk to you today about domain, uh, multi-domain architecture. The, the last statement here about the general defense within one domain of uh, reference is not possible. Let's talk about multi-domain architecture. And what multi-domain architecture is, that is hardware and software fault tolerance. Hardware fault tolerance, it does not down systems, it downs components. You can work around a, a, a failed component. And software, well, aren't, it's not going to debug your program, but if you have a software upload that causes your system to crash, you can recover from that. It does a great job of uh, component failure analysis, and it does virus prevention at multiple levels. And what it does is it divides a computer into two systems, two domains. The computation domain uh, is, is called the DID, the data and instruction domain, and housekeeping is the process, scheduling, and the address domain. These guys are two separate pieces of hardware. So they have to work together to make the thing work, or you got an error, which you need to play. But what it does is you get interrupts. It saves the state of that process in the memory. It goes off and does the other end, uh, does the interrupt, whatever's doing, and it comes back and starts reprocessing that memory. And, and in multi-domain architectures, that uh, context switch represents a checkpoint. So I, if any piece of hardware ever goes bad because the scheduler is another piece of, of uh, hardware, so if the DID goes down, something happens in the DID domain, another piece of hardware can just go back to the last checkpoint and replay it on good hardware. So the software fails, you just blacklist the software and go on with other processes. And it's an architecture. We'll get into that in a second. You can use it any old comp part, and best of all, all of your existing uh, software still works. So the best way I can describe it is to compare it to a single domain architecture. And in 1938, John von Neumann and his friends laid down the rules how he thought an uh, uh, computer architecture should work. And 99% of all computers today, maybe 100, are von Neumann-based architectures. What he said is that you have an input, it goes into the, the CPU, and that's how you get data into it, and it crunches numbers to the memory, both the instruction and the data is in a common memory, there's some variations of that, and you get information on, on the output for it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call the input, output, and memory a system, and the CPU the CPU. And here's what it looks like in a Venn diagram. 
The intersection between these two things are common components such as memory management units and traits of the circuit board. So you have four functions within the single domain system. You have the data and instructions. You have the CPU is creating instructions, manipulating data. The address space sends it out to and from the system. And you also have two types of scheduling. You have, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to stick to Linux here. So, uh, bear with me. so you have uh, two types of scheduling here. You have like forks and child processors goes off. And that creates a context switch. And you have control signals that come in every so often to create interrupts. And that also creates a context switch. In a multi domain architecture, you have the same sort of thing. You have the DID talks to the system, but it does it through a virtualization switch. And it is controlled by uh, a, what I call a meta controller. And so that controls uh, all the process scheduling and it virtualizes the address to the CPU. So the CPU is just happily getting data to and from the system, but it really doesn't know where, it's getting, where the data really resides. Where it really resides is controlled by the path. Here's what it looks like in, a, uh, uh, in an operating system. So you can see here uh, that the interface from the application to the operating system is the exact same in both systems. That means that you don't have to change any of your code. And since I'm not changing into the CPU op codes, it, it works perfectly fine. But what does change is the kernel layer. And the kernel layer is basically the same thing, or basically the pad, it's a separate piece of hardware. And so it does the same thing as, as the single domain system does, it just does it differently. It does it in a different manner at all, but it performs the same exact task. If you just hold your... I was just going to ask what the colors mean on the very bottom line. Oh, so the, the colors uh, were ah. color coordinated. Color coordinated, see, it's like a shirt and pants here. Color coordinated. Down here, it, it, it's hard. You can't really, the, the CPU and the memory is kind of a big blob. So it's really hard to, to, to get them out. So here's what it looks like a block diagram. Color coordinated again, right? So you get um, a couple of CPUs here. In case one of them fails, you can go back to the last checkpoint and play it on good CPU. And you have the memory and the I.O. And the I.O. control goes over to the meta controller. And you have a, a redundant switch here. Now that switch could be a cost switch, it could be a federation switch. We're showing it here in a spark confederation. Actually, it's far better for it to be an FPGA or a, an A chain. It just doesn't show, show quite as well. And over here, the meta controller is the is the kernel layer. So you have to know about the process, program, uh, uh, process control, the processes are running on one CPU in the memory. Uh, location is the sandboxes that uh, the process is put in. Forgot to mention back here. This is why the guy in C34C can have the flight controller. Any member of that system domain can, is, has access to any other member of that system. And here, any member of the DID domain has no access whatsoever the process scheduling or the address thing. So I'm saying, and the process address uh, controller cannot change anything in the digital domain. So these guys are electronically separated. They can't change. So uh, over here we have uh, also the uh, rule and run back, rule and roll based access control part back. And uh, this is uh, the same as the RBAC and single domain system where you have roles and roles of processes and users. But in a multi-domain system, that gets extended to the hardware too. So if I'm sitting in a class in a 34C, I'm on the uh, client entertainment system. The rules say I can't have a leak. And I know that because I scheduled the process to the guy interrupted me, and I know when that process started, so he's sandboxed. He can't get out. So multi-domain architecture doesn't do anything differently or different, but it does do them differently. And it really does do things that a single domain can't do. So some of its features are that it's hardware fault tolerant. 
talk about that a bit. We'll talk about that a bit more. In a software or when a software fails in a multi-domain architecture, not only do we get a core dump, but you can go back to the last uh, checkpoint and replay that failure so you can watch it fail. And it does virus prevention. Virus prevention is kind of a strong term. It's very controversial. But I put it to you, 35 years, nobody solved the problem. I have to attack something, I don't care what it is. It could be a Byzantine castle, it could be the OK Corral, or it could be a computer. You have to have these three things together in one place. You have to know how to attack, you have to know when to attack, and you have to know where to attack. Now, my mama told me, never ever take a knife to a gunfight. She just says, don't ever do it. So if I go to the OK Corral with a knife, and Doc Holliday is over there with a the shotgun, and I show up at 12 noon, it's not going to work out for me. But likewise, I can take a Gatling gun to the OK Corral, and I show up at 5 o'clock in the afternoon, that's not going to work out either. Or I can show up at 4th Avenue at noon with a Gatling gun, and that's still not going to So I have to have all three of those things together in one place. And multi-domain architecture, you can never have three things in one place. The did is how you attack, the pad is when and where you attack. So your attack on this system is just not going to be, not going to work out. It does fold isolation. We're going to uh, see an example of that in a moment. And also in the virus, uh, I forgot to mention this earlier, we're going to see an example of a virus in, in, uh, in a minute. And this virus is going to be an ROP virus. I don't know if you're familiar with an ROP virus, but it's a return-oriented programming virus. And what it does is it goes fishing through common library, shared library, and that sort of thing. It looks for return codes, return opcodes. And then it goes back and looks for useful bits of opcodes that it can use. So it just does a jump to the opcode, and it gets a return. So it jumps to the opcode, it does a return, and it puts together to where it's part of the system. And it has no signature to it. You don't know if you have this virus or not. It does reconfigurable hardware and software. If you're on a long space flight and you want to put things to sleep, you can just put them to sleep and it can reconfigure itself to be a supercomputer when you wanted to uh, re entry. And lastly, it does combinatorial mathematics. So you can describe the system in, in terms of graphs you can, uh, or Neural net. You can even describe the term panning distances. But uh, today we're going to look at it in terms of common point mathematics called Euler squares or Greco Latin squares. Spoiler alert, we're going to have simultaneous problems with hardware failure and a virus problem. And this is what our system is going to look like. Uh, here we have, uh, let's see if I do this again. We have three sensors here redundant sensors. And what we're going to do is we're going to read the raw value of the sensor and then we're going to do a memory lookup table. This is not a memory address, it's just a, a table lookup. So, And then we're going to take that uh, human readable value and then we're going to display it. So the sensor over here is going to take uh, raw data, memory lookup, display it over here. Down here we have two Greco Latin squares. And we're going to fill in uh, on the hardware side, we're just going to fill in these values that we read into the display. We're going to put them in here. And the process time over here is the time it takes to start this process to the time it takes to the end to the display. So we're just going to fill out this square here. So the first thing that happens is we're going to assign the blue process to CPU zero. So we're going to pair it with C0. Then we're going to take the green process, assign it to CPU2, and pair it with P1. And then we're going to take the pink process, it should be the same value, uh, to CPU3 and P2. So the blue process does the memory lookup and displays it in display zero, and it puts it into the square down here, and CPU0 and P0. So we can see here that it's 265 arbitrary value of error, and it took, say, 72 microseconds to complete. Over here, uh, the green process does 265, but it took 155 microseconds to complete. And over here, we find
find that the pace process is actually, I don't know, uh, it was 93 and it took 52 uh, microseconds to complete. This is all the information you get out of our Neumann system. So what's going to happen is you're going to get, oh, so these guys are 265 and that's 93. I'm voting that guy out. He's gone. So I'm down to two systems in the von Neumann system. In the multi domain system, we're going to fill out the squares. So we assign the green process to CQ0, CQ2. The pink process goes to CQ2, P0. And the blue process this time is on CQ3, P1. And we fill that out. And, and so uh, we start to see a pattern here, but we can't be sure exactly what's happened until we complete the square, which we do, and it is done. So we can see here that the tensor P2 has failed. There could be no other explanation for it. We have tried every single thing, every single component. We have permutated everything in there, and the only explanation for that row being 93 is that the sensor P2 has failed. Likewise, over here at the process time, we see that the green process took roughly three times more than the other two processes. So it's doing something that the other two processes are not doing. And in this case, it's thumbing through the shared library. So we have caught a virus coming through the shared library, and a sensor has failed, and we're still full power. So comparing the two systems together, we can see that the um, single domain system has limited fault analysis. Multi domain system has reconfigurable systems. Uh, virus protection, we have 35-year legacy. Virus protection over here, we have disjoint domains and reconfigurable systems. Computational speed is always a very popular question here. You know, what about that switch? What about that? If you use a 32 nanometer uh, FPGA, you can do line speed on a 3 gigahertz uh, Intel chip that's running at the bus speed running at 3 megahertz. Although I don't think that a uh, 3 megahertz or 3 gigahertz Intel chip will be uh, qualified to say that for the, the trade. But it will keep up with line speed. Let's see. Software is a standard. Again, you don't ever have to change your uh, instructions at all to have the same work, and it does production uh, update. update. So that's all I got. I'm open for questions. Other questions? No, no. Okay, well, thank you very much.